hard for what you want in life. You work hard for what you want in life. That, that, that your word is your bond, that you do what you say you're gonna do. That your word is your bond, and you do what you say. You what you say. That you treat people with dignity and respect. That you treat, 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 treat people with respect. Reach of your dream and your willingness to work hard. The strength of your dream and your willingness to work for them. Work hard. Work hard. Work hard. Work hard. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Blessed and Bossed Up podcast. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much to all of you guys who wished us a happy anniversary on social media. I went live the other day and um, I wanted to just bring some people up to the live who have who are listeners of the show, those of you guys who've been impacted by the show. I mean, we have people come up who've been listening to the show for years and Tiffany, shout out to Tiffany. She had me shedding thug tears on the internet, y'all. And that is not in my character, okay? I am not one that wants to be crying online. Like, I still send Michael Jordan gifts and memes out <laughs> when I'm text messaging. So I just do not want to be on the internet with tears running down my face but she did it she made me cry jasmine was the first one she got me i think i, I caught them i caught the tears before they came out but i couldn't control it with tiffany so thank you guys that was actually um our marketing manager's idea to do that and so i was like girl i ain't trying to be on here i don't know i don't know how that's gonna look but i was like okay fine let's just do it this is why you know you have people around who know what they're doing and that really blessed me like for me it looked like something on my to-do list it was like all right cool i gotta go live this is what we doing i had like four things that i've learned over the last four years podcasting and i'm actually going to post a replay to that live as a little bonus episode because it was really some good content in there so i want to uh, post it here but you can also follow us on instagram at blessed and bossed up to um, catch the video replay but I was a little stuck, man. I did not expect to be crying like that, but it really, really, really blessed me. So I just have to say thank you guys. I can't thank you enough for the amount of support that you guys show me, the podcast, Anchor Media, and I just really love y'all and I really appreciate you. We also dropped our merch. Y'all, if you go to blessedandbossedup.com, you can see all of the awesome apparel. If you're watching the video of this on YouTube or social media, I have on one of our sweatshirts called Busy Producing Well. Um, and it's based off of the scripture, Deuteronomy 8.18, where it says that God gives us the power to produce wealth. And so um, all of the God is my CEO merch is there. We have mugs, t-shirts, wall art, um, sweatshirts. Y'all have been loving the sweatshirts. We got hoodies, cropped hoodies, all of the things. So go to blessedandbossedup.com. We have some that says God is my CEO and we have others that say busy producing wealth. So run it up. I know that you guys are going to love everything that we have to offer. All right, so for this week's episode, I'm going to talk about how to operate in your authority consistently. Now, this is something that honestly can be a series. I might come back with a part two later. God gives me the episode, so I don't know what next week's episode is going to be about. I may elaborate on this. I may not, um, but I do want to preface the show by just saying that there are many ways that you can operate in your authority consistently. I'm going to go over three, but I really, really want you guys to take the things that we talk about on this, this podcast and go back and apply them, right? This podcast, I don't want this to be a place where I'm just pumping you up and giving you motivation. I want you to go back, take what you learn here and go back to the Father. The best feedback and things that I hear from talking to listeners is that, Tatum, I had a business meeting with God because of you and this is what happened. Or I set the atmosphere because of that episode and this is what happened. Or now because I've seen the things that you've talked about, I've started to surrender my business to God and this is what happened. Like this is what it is all about taking whatever it is he uses me to say on this platform and going back to him for yourself. There are enough people in here building altars and brands and communities that glorify them. It's enough of that out here. And I want to always make sure that I redirect you guys back to the, to the Father because I don't know everything. 
I do not know everything, but I come on here and I do my best to communicate the messages that he gives me. And again, I cannot emphasize enough the importance to take the revelations that you get, take the insight that you get right back to him. So last week's episode, we talked about being uncompromising. And in one of those points, I talked about being uncompromising about your authority. And I was having a conversation with a friend of mine uh, the other day, shout out to Kristen. And we were talking and, and she was just talking about some of the things that she was going through and believing God for and the season that she was in. And I was like, you know, I really think that this is a time that you have to step into the authority that you had. And I was telling her how when I first started um, surrendering to God or when I first got saved, saved, as I say all the time on the show, I was in for a few years after that, it was all about surrendering. It was all about restructuring the way that I did things so that I made sure that I was in alignment with God. And so once I got uh, used to that, if that makes sense, or that became more second nature. So like making God the CEO is just natural at this point because it's what I've been doing for years and just really seeking him on everything. Like now it's a, it's a flow and it's a habit and it's something I'm used to. It's second nature. So once I got used to and consistent with surrendering, I came to another crossroads because I didn't know where I fit in the midst of that surrender. And so this is where um, operating in your authority come, came in. It was an internal battle that I dealt with when it came to walking in my authority because I didn't know where my authority fit in living a submitted lifestyle, right? So it's like, God, well, if I'm surrendering to you and if I'm following you, where do I fit in that? Like, how can I have authority when I'm not supposed to be operating in my flesh? So in going back to scripture, because the scripture does talk about how he's given us the authority. And I think I gave the scripture, um, a scripture last week, talking about how he gave us the authority to trample on um, serpents, about how we can lay hands on the sick and they'll be healed. Like it, the different levels of authority that he's giving us here on earth. I, I'm seeing these things in the word, but like I said, it was this conflict, this internal conflict where I was like, well, how does that apply to a surrendered life? And what I realized was that, um, and what God showed me was I have authority. I need to exercise my authority, but I need not ever forget what the source of that authority is and who the uh, provider of that authority is. And so it made me realize even more though, how easy it is to get out of alignment because we may get to a place where we're used to uh, declaring things and they're established, right? We're used to binding things on earth um, and so that they're bound in heaven and loosen things on uh, earth and they're loose in heaven. Like we're used to uh, exercising that authority in the earth realm, laying hands on ourselves and seeing results. Like we're used to praying and the prayers being powerful and effective. Like the word says, operating in that authority is what we're supposed to do, but we need not forget, like I said, who the provider of that authority is because the second that we do is where pride comes in, is where ego comes in. Is where you start thinking that you're the one that got yourself there. And then that's where you start slipping over to building a life and a business that's for you and not for God. And so in today's episode, I want to first address that because I, I know that may be a conflict for others. It was a conflict for me, but it's important that we walk in our authority and we exercise and operate in that authority consistently because again, God is the one that's empowering that in us. God is the one that's authorizing that in us. And by us not operating in that authority, we're minimizing what he is able to do through us. And so in today's episode, I'm going to go over just three keys, three points, three ways that you can operate in your authority consistently because that's the thing that comes up with a lot of us like I get these questions all the time about consistency and so I want to give you some things that's going to help you operate in that authority consistently so number one and it's actually number three on my list but I'm gonna bring it up to number one is you have to have an offensive and not a defensive prayer life 
I'm going to say that again. You have to have an offensive and not a defensive prayer life. You should not only be praying when something happens. You should not only be praying when somebody is sick. You should not only be praying when you get demoted on the job. You need to have an offensive prayer life. You need to understand that there is a war going on whether you are a willing participant or not. I'm reading a book right now called uh, The Rules of Engagement by Cindy Tramp. The link is in my Amazon store. And I love this book because she talks about how as believers, a lot of times we underestimate how organized, how sophisticated, and how powerful the realm of the spirit is as far as darkness is concerned, as far as what the enemy has going on, how organized his uh, army is. And so this book breaks down just the level, uh, talks about um, the different levels of the demonic spirits, the demons, the uh, principalities, the just the different levels and rankings that they have in the, in the dark world, the different tactics that the enemy uses to kill, steal, and destroy. Like she breaks it all the way down. And I'm loving this book because it's opening my eyes to how important it is for me to be offensive about my life and not defensive. Like we say the scripture all the time that the enemy walks around like a roaring lion seeking whom he can destroy. It talks about how the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So the enemy is constantly working and he's not married to any method to make his plan happen. And so we can't be sleep on the job or come late to the fight, so to speak, to where we done already got knocked down four or five times before we actually put our armor on. No, we need to wake up every single day and put on the full armor of God. We need to wake up every single day and speak life into whatever our situations are. We need to wake up every single day and speak the word of God. So the first thing that you need to do to walk in that authority is and to walk in it consistently is having offensive and not a defensive prayer life because remember the war is happening whether you participate or not and i mentioned this last week that when you come the battlefield the the battlefield is really in your mind and when you come into agreement or accept thoughts and feelings and emotions that are contrary to what god said you're now creating strongholds that the enemy can hide behind and so I talked about that last week, so I won't go too deep into it uh, again, but I just want to reemphasize that point so that you understand that the war is going on. When you wake up and you feel like, or you, when you say things out your mouth like, oh, 2021 looking real 2020-ish, no, you're speaking death into, into this year. You're speaking into what the enemy is doing and not what God is doing. So a part of being offensive about our prayer life is being quiet. If we're not saying the things that God is saying, it's just shutting up completely so that we are not um, using our tongue, our mouths, of most one of the most powerful things that God has given us, opposite of the way that we're supposed to be using it. And I love this book again. It has this, this warfare prayer in it. And I did it with the society a few weeks ago. I'm actually going to just pull the recording and uh, clip out the part where I read through the prayer. And I'm going to post it here on um, the podcast feed because it's so important to be offensive. It's so important to be strategic. The enemy is very, very strategic. And what this book has been showing me is just how deep. It is. And I'm like, man, we're not taught this stuff in church. Like I didn't learn these things. And I'm so grateful that God has provided people uh, who have written these types of books or people like you who God is calling to do certain things. These are the reasons why you have to put out those podcasts. You have to write that book. You have to start that business because you're providing tools that, that believers are going to be able to have in their arsenal to be more effective. So because she wrote that book years ago, I could tell it's an older book. I don't even know what year it was written, but because she wrote that book, I now have another a tool in my arsenal that I'm going to use for the things that God is calling me to do. But again, going back to that main point, number one, have an offensive and not a defensive prayer life. Point number two, how to operate in your authority consistently, safeguard your surrender. A huge mistake I believe a lot of us make is we think surrendering is a one-time thing. 
And my friend and I were talking about this the other day. Like you have to surrender over and over and over. We live in a flesh that wants to operate, whose desire is to operate against the way God is calling us to operate. We we are constantly at a war with our flesh to make sure that we're moving in alignment with God. And so you cannot go about this journey in a passive manner, right? So when it comes to safeguarding your surrender, the first thing you have to do is understand that you're going to have to surrender consistently. I surrender every day. I surrender my business every day, my life every day, my body every day. When I have an idea, I surrender it. When a business opportunity comes up, I surrender it. When issues come up, I surrender. I probably surrender a million times in one day because if not, I'm going to walk into that dangerous line of now doing things in my own strength. And for me personally, that's just not a place that I want to live. When I told God that I will follow him, I meant it. When I got saved, saved, and I said, God, if you light a fire on the inside of me for you, I will not go astray. I meant that. But a part of maintaining that promise that I gave to him is to make sure that I'm constantly in a surrender state. And then after that, making sure that I'm safeguarding those decisions. And so you have to get to a place where you have made a concrete decision to live a life submitted to the will of God. And then you safeguard it. When you safeguard something, you protect it from harm or damage. I don't want my covenant that I made with God that I was going to live for him to be harmed or damaged. And a way that you do that is that you remove things that feed your fleshly desire. So to get practical real quick, because y'all know I love to be practical. When I first became an entrepreneur, it was very, very hard for me to stay surrendered in my business. Because I couldn't understand that how when I started to do things God's way, it seems like all hell broke loose. It seemed like the I wasn't making money the way that I thought I would. It's it, when I'm surrendering to him thinking he's going to give me the big idea that's going to make me this super success. He tells me to shut everything down and now I'm stuck with nothing. I couldn't understand how people who were not living for God, not even checking for him, were doing better. Like I could not understand how these people were seeing success after success, hit after hit. A successful launch after I could not understand it win after win and it seems like all I was doing was taking L's the moment I decided to truly live for God I was frustrated it pissed me off if I'm being frank and I did not like it but I but I had to confront those emotions and say well Tatum what are you going to do do are you going to renege on that covenant are you going to renege on that decision and I had to pull myself up. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to pull yourself up real quick and be like, sis, what you going to do? What are you going to do? And that's a question that I asked myself. And I said, you know what? I decided to surrender to God and I'm going to stay here. And so in order to safeguard it, I had to unfollow people who triggered certain things in me. Because sometimes you might be following, you may want you may be following certain people, maybe even me, because it's in you want it to be inspiring to you, but it actually ends up triggering you. And so you have to be pay attention to how you react to certain things. So if something is triggering, you cut it off. The enemy will use those things that are meant to inspire to trigger you. So even if it's me, y'all unfollow me. I care way more about you staying surrendered and you staying on track for what God is calling you to do than I care about listeners, followers, or anything like that. It's not about these things. It's about salvation. It's about building up the kingdom of God. It's about his will being done on earth as it is in heaven. So safeguard those things by unfollowing people, places, and things that are triggering you and that are, are feeding your flesh. If you're on a celibacy journey, Stop watching the shows that has the vivid sex scenes that's just putting that back into your mind. Unfollow that soul tie that you prayed so hard to, to cut off, but you see him, he doing this, he doing that, and now it's attractive to you and it's putting you back in a state of mind that you don't need to be in. Safeguard that surrender by cutting those things off. Another way that I safeguard my surrender is I don't want my voice to be influenced by anything or anybody but the Holy Spirit. So I try to stay away from any uh, anybody else that's like talking faith in business. Um, I try to stay away from a lot of like preachers and things like that. I mean, I really 
I'm really not even into that anyway, but I try to stay away from even people who are talking about podcasting. Like I just stay away from things because I need to be tapped into God and I don't want to be influenced by anything besides the Holy Spirit and what he's calling me to do. Something may make business sense, but it not be, may not be his will for me at that time. And I need to have a pure ear and a pure eye to be able to discern certain things. So that's something that I do that you guys can do as well. Also separate yourself from people, places, and things, be it in person or digitally that distort biblical principles. Let me say that one more time surrender or excuse me separate yourself from people places and things be it in person or digitally that distort biblical principles when you're living a life that's surrendered to god you're always going to have a little bit of frustration i'm not gonna say always but there's going to be a lot of times where you'll have some frustration right where god is calling you to do things where you don't want to do them you're not maybe not seeing the immediate result from it you may be frustrated for whatever reason and that's when the enemy can seep in through your frustration and bring about compromise right bring about distortion bring about false uh doctrine and the thing about the enemy is he knows the word of god as well and so a lot of people get confused, especially in entrepreneurship with a lot of these new age practices and occult and just blatant witchcraft because they look like they're God-like or they are scripture adjacent, but that's not the word of God and God is nowhere near it. We even think about when the enemy tempted Jesus in Matthew 4, and I'm going to read it 1 through 11. It says, then Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted there by the devil. For 40 days and 40 nights, he fasted and became very hungry. During that time, the devil came and said to him, if you are son of God, tell these stones to become loaves of bread. But Jesus told him, no, the scripture says people do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city, Jerusalem, to the highest point of the temple and said, if you are the son of God, jump off. For the scripture said, now this is the enemy quoting scripture. He will order, uh, excuse me, it says, for the scripture says, he will order his angels to protect you and they will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. Jesus responded, the scriptures also say, you must not test the Lord your God. Next, the devil took him to the peak of a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. I will give it all to you, he said, if you will kneel down and worship me. Get out of here, Satan, Jesus told him. For the scriptures say, you must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil went away and the angels came and took care of Jesus. There are a lot of things going on in entrepreneurship that try to distort uh, the word of God. And if you're ignorant, because ignorance is a, a way that the enemy seeps in and destroys believers is because we don't take the time to truly read and to understand the word. So one thing I'm going to always tell y'all to do is open up your Bibles because the enemy knows scripture as well. And you have to, if you're going to be safeguarding your surrender, you have to understand the word of God and know how to apply it. We study to pass tests right? Jesus passed this test. We studied to pass tests. So make sure, again, if you're safeguarding this surrender, that you know the word of God, because without it, you are going to be extremely vulnerable and you do not have authority without the word of God, period. And then uh, also going into safeguarding your surrender, you also do it by having tunnel vision. And when I say tunnel vision, I'm not talking about being focused on your goals, being focused on your uh, your goals list or your vision board or whatever. I'm saying having tunnel vision about God and his plan for your life to where you're tapped into him, where you're just seeing him, where you're looking at him and saying, OK, God, tell me what to do next. He says, turn right, you turn right. Okay, God, now what am I doing next? Turn left, you turn left. God, what am I doing next? Jump three times, you jump three times. Whatever it is that he's telling you to do, focus on him. You safeguard your surrender. You operate in your authority consistently by staying focused on him. And let me tell y'all something. I keep it real cute. 
I keep it very cute actually, because if I was to be operating in my flesh, I would have said a bunch of stuff a long time ago. I've had so like, as God has began to elevate me so much, like I've had people just steal from, steal things from me and blatantly act as if it's their revelation. I've had people try to sabotage me. I've had people who work with me in some capacity and then try to go out and then duplicate what it is that I do. I've had people try to get close to me, but their hearts aren't pure. They're trying to break things up. I've had people try to get close to me and, and my marriage. I've had so many things and foolishness that has tried to pull me off out of what God has me to, has me doing or have tried to sabotage or tried to taint what God has me doing in some type of way. And I do not talk about it because it's a distraction. It's simply a distraction. But if I was to be clapping back, if I was to be trying to prove myself, if I was to be trying to do all of these things, I'm losing focus. I'm then not operating in my authority. I'm operating in my flesh. The Bible says that he will prepare a feast for me in front of my enemy. So what do I need to comment on things for? What do I need to say anything for? He said that he will make my name great. So I don't have to go about trying to boast who I am. He will make my name great. And I don't need to do anything to help him do it. All I need to do is stay tunnel vision and focused on him. But our emotions are hurt from betrayals. Our uh, our egos being bruised or our, our feelings being hurt by something somebody may have done. These things take us off of or these things bring us out of being surrendered and get us into operating in our flesh. But we have to have tunnel vision. We have to have tunnel vision. When I, when I told my family that I was going to quit my job, this year will make, what, four years? Yeah, four years because I quit my job the same year we started the podcast. So when I, when I quit my nine to five, everybody was saying, oh, why you want to do that? I was maybe 23, 24 at the time. You too young to be doing that. You about to do this full time. My boss at my job told me straight up, like you too young to be out here trying to, to be a full time entrepreneur. My family, people, even people who are believers, like you sure you want to do that? Did God tell you that, that, that that's what you should be doing? I don't know, Tatum. I think you need to do this first. I think you need to do that. But I had to have tunnel vision on God. And guess what? Four years later, I'm the lender and not the borrower. People are now the same people are coming to me for help for things that they're doing, for money to invest in the things that they're doing. But what if I would have listened to them? What would that mean for y'all that's listening to this show? What would that mean for uh, the people that are called? Like, what would that mean for those that are attached to this? Yes. And so this is a long point, but I cannot emphasize enough the importance of safeguarding your surrender. And then the last thing that I want you guys to think about when it comes to operating in your authority consistently is I need you to know and identify the, the symptoms of being out of alignment so that whenever you are out of position that you quickly go back. Something that really struck me last year when I was reading Moses' story is that he never saw the promised land because of one mistake that he made and he took credit for something that was God's in a split second because of his frustration that was so mind-blowing to me like that doesn't take away from all that he accomplished though like Moses is of course like we you if you know you know right but that was so mind-blowing to me because it was it was such a, a split emotions driven decision he was so frustrated with the people at that time that he took credit for what God did and because of that decision he didn't get to see the promised land and that really stuck with me and why I talk about the importance of being in alignment and safeguarding your surrender because frustration will cause you to make mistakes that will blow it for you and I don't know about y'all, but I don't want to blow it. I really don't. I do. That's my prayer every day. I say, God, I do not want to blow it. I can't mess this up. 
anybody who I trust to pour into me because I have wise counsel. I have people that I trust with uh, the vulnerabilities of things that I go through and what God is calling me to. I do not feel that I can come on here and open my mouth every week without having uh, wisdom or people pouring back into me um, and people building me up. And so one of the things that I keep, I always say whenever I'm facing like a difficult decision and I'm praying or I'm talking to those that I trust in my life, I'm like, man, I cannot mess this up. And as, and that has, is really heavy on my mind at all times because of Moses, because it was just frustration in that moment out of all the things that he did right. And it, that doesn't discredit any of those things either. But with all of the amazing things that he accomplished, this one thing, and that he went on to accomplish even after that decision, he didn't get to see the promised land. I want to see mine, straight up. I want to see my promised land. So for me, it's one of the ways that I make sure that I'm constantly operating in my authority and that um I'm also safeguarding my surrender is that I'm identifying the symptoms of being out of alignment. And so for me, I told you guys on the show before, it's overwhelmed. Whenever I feel overwhelmed, I got to take a step back. Even right now, if I'm being honest, I made a stupid mistake of not taking a break before the new year. For the last couple of years, I've taken all of December off. This past year, I didn't because we just have a lot going on with Anchor Media and the business is just growing quick. It's growing fast. And I did not take a break. And so I know me, I'm a very sharp and I'm a very focused person. I zone in and I can get things done really fast, really well. And so um, I'm finding myself just not being able to focus the same, feeling a bit overwhelmed, just getting not being able to sleep that well, being just fatigued. And I, those are signs and symptoms to me that I need to take a step back. Those are those mean that I am operating in my own strength, that I'm out of alignment and that I, and that I need rest. And so even one of my priorities for this week is to get things in order so that I can take a break. So I might take a week off. I don't know what that's going to look like yet, but I have to take a step back so that I can make sure that I'm allowing God to pour back into me. So for you guys, understand what the symptoms are for you to be out of alignment so that when they come up, then you know what to do. And so for me, my go-to whenever these symptoms come up is, okay, I take a step back, I take a break, um, I rest, I fast, and I get in my word, and that's it. I'm not pouring out to nobody. I'm not doing nothing for nobody. It's, it's just me and my father. And these are the things that you have to identify now before you get to the next level you're trying to get at or the because the more you grow the more is at stake and i want you to understand that because we idolize the next level so much we idolize our view and perception of success so much that we miss the lessons and the tools that we need to get and the strength that we need in the season that we're in right now. And so these are one of those things that you have to identify right now because the more you grow, the more is at stake. When like Anchor Media is launching something um, this year with some shows that I've worked on and one thing that's been top of mind for me that I've just been thinking as I reflect is like, man, I'm so grateful for the lessons that I've learned in, in previous seasons because I can't afford to make the mistakes now that I made before. It's way too much at stake because now it's not just me. It's the shows that I, it's the people that are attached to me as far as this platform goes. It's my team. It's my son. It's my, the shows that I work with. It's the listeners of those shows. Like it just tri like it's a domino effect. Like I cannot make the same mistakes here that I made before. I have to operate in my authority at all times because I have to make sure that I'm showing up the best, uh, my best. And the way that I am operating in my best is operating in my full authority with God facilitating or powering that. Even with my book, I'm, I told you guys, many of you guys know I'm writing my second book. Like, I'm I'm entering into a new mountain, right? So I primarily operate in a mountain of media through my podcast and anchor media and all of that. But I'm moving into a new mountain with this book. This book is about total life. And so I'm I'm infiltrating now this mountain of family. 
that's the foundation. That's a, a foundation. Like I, I, it's a lot at stake <laughs> with that. And so I have to, uh, I have to use the things that I've learned in previous seasons to make, because I cannot make the mistakes that I made then. So even for you guys, like what the season that you're in right now is so important that you operate in your authority consistently, that you safeguard your surrender, that you identify the symptoms of being out of alignment and that you have an offensive and not just a defensive prayer life. So I'm going to go ahead and stick a pin in it right here. Thank you guys so much for listening to this episode. Thank you for the celebration and the kudos and the, the congratulatory messages for our four-year anniversary. We celebrating all month. You know how like when your birthday coming up and you're like, oh, I'm celebrating the whole month. Yeah, we're doing that. <laughs> go to blessedandbossedup.com to get your God is my CEO merch. And that's it. I love you guys and I'll see you in the next episode.